This is basically the world of aquaculture. In the world of technology and how it's aiding you know, digital marketing, she has actually made impact of touching lives of uh, 500 women in the Lake region. And this includes that have basically measured into the world of aquaculture. I'm talking about uh, Mary Nakesa. She is the founder of Harfish Impact. Karibu sana, Mary. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I'd like you to give us just a brief uh, background of how uh, Harfish came to be birthed and the journey it has uh, gone through. Thank you. As the name suggests, Harfish, mm -hmm. uh, we wanted something that has to do with women and fish. So Ha is for the woman and then the fish is the fish. And then the impact part, mm -hmm. it was how the fish is impacting women. Right. And this is a program that's, that was powered by Frankie's Foundation. Mm -hmm. And the Frankie's Foundation, they provide us with digital literacy. Mm -hmm. So with that, we wanted to help women to know how they can just market their, their products online. Right. We, we didn't want it to end by the lake. Like they, the fishermen just bring the fish and then mm -hmm. the women around the lake or the young girls around the lake, yeah. they receive the fish and maybe they just sell there around. Yeah. So when we brought digital literacy was for them to know that you can create a page, you can reach uh, a larger, mm -hmm. a larger, market, a yeah. larger market. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, wh why did you venture into this uh, part of fish specifically <laughs> in 2019, just before COVID-19? Mm -hmm. And I believe maybe there was a little bit of disruption you'll highlight. Was there um, a need for you to venture into, into uh, fish marketing? Did it align maybe with your personal core values? Or is it just a gap that you identified in the Lake region that pushed you towards that space? First, I'll say... Uh, being born and raised by the lake, mm -hmm. like uh, I know the value of fish. I know what a fish can do in a business. I know the business of fish. Mm -hmm. I've seen my mom, I've seen the women around doing the, the fish business. It has mm -hmm. profits. Personally, right. I've been educated by the fish. Right. So uh, me seeing my mom just her receiving the fish by the lake and just selling, mm -hmm. and then now you come to the city and you're like, how will someone in Nairobi, someone like you, know that mm -hmm. there's fish at the lake? Right. So when I came with, uh, when uh, Frankie, Frankie's foundation came to power us, mm -hmm. they brought the digital skills. So right. now we can help these women to, you know, take photos of their fish. Mm -hmm. They even supply them here to Nairobi. Right. Yeah. So when they reach Nairobi, they can say, maybe we also have a market like in Gikomba. We have right. a market there. But mm -hmm. how will people know? Many yeah. people don't know Gikomba. They can only know that through digital mm -hmm. literacy. Yes. So when we help these young women and women around the lake to know about the digital literacy, mm -hmm. that is just a business. A fish right. business, if you ask Kenyan, is uh, profitable if you just sure and you put your mm -hmm. mind to it. And nice. for me, it was easier because, like I've said and I'll repeat, I've been born and I see the value of fish. So. Mm -hmm. I chose fish because it's yeah. in me and I know what it can do yeah. as a business and if yeah. improved. <laughs> you should, it's you and you are it. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but then uh, I'm also interested to understand uh, when this project first took off, uh, mm -hmm. which was the specific location that you ventured into and what are the activities that happened when you started this program initially? in its oh. uh, formative years. Yeah, initially when it started, like it was just like, you know, I was in the business, just the buying, like I've mentioned, my mom, like has done it for the longest time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Toto Anyoka Nino, Ninyoka, okay. but you know, I had to find a way to do it in a better way. Right. Like for example, now to bring them to Nairobi, you know, mm -hmm. you find the, uh, the right transport, how they can reach here. And mm -hmm. me by helping yeah. those, there is not me alone, it's yeah. not my business. I'm also talking about the people who mm -hmm. we've that empowered. Like, with yeah, them. who okay. we've, we've taught digital marketing can do this and mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so which was the specific lo location that you began, you began this project when you first of all launched it? Here in Budalangi. It's uh -huh, in, in Budalangi. Budalangi yeah. uh -huh. So yeah. that is uh, still like Victoria. Yeah, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. So what happened when you first launched it? When How did you do? Did you do outreach to the women? in the Lake region? Uh, uh, we do with community. Mm -hmm. We get maybe people from churches. We are like, you know people who do business. You just go by the beach. Right. You just find those women there. It's mm -hmm. always busy. Mm -hmm. Like you just find them and then you know, 
you have to talk. If you don't talk, they'll not know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a community. We partner with community mm -hmm. and, you know, the women around, you know, if you tell someone, she'll tell someone, she'll tell someone. And maybe right. we find a way where we sit and then we empower them and, you know, give them the knowledge. Yeah, empowerment is a very strong, good word, by the way. Yeah. But then when you look at, when you break it down, when it comes to empowerment for these women, does it mean that you're offering them incentives or you are giving them platforms to market their fish? Because I'm also looking at it from the picture we just painted. Uh, yeah. When you go there on the lectures, there's women who are selling omena, yeah, yeah. selling different types of fish or different kinds of fish. Yeah. yeah. So do you approach them in person and tell them, hey, mom, Nikonahi, Nahi, and I want you to collaborate, or oh, there's an agency that you have mm -hmm. and it does outreach for you and then eventually they end up joining the program. That's like what I wanted I'll to say, get here. Like we train them. We have okay. a place where we have the computers that have been uh, provided by the Frankies. Okay. So like we train them on simple things like opening and closing a computer, mm -hmm. creating an app especially. Recently right. we are focusing on them to create uh, business accounts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just a place we go like a cyber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the we have ICT gurus from Frankie's Foundation. Right. Now they, co they come and provide that digital literacy. Mm -hmm. Yes, on, and then the other part of now empowering mm -hmm. what the girls So The Frankie's, when they're doing that, um, also coming in, like we're doing it twice, mm -hmm. the business part and also yeah. the social part, the right. empowerment part. Mm -hmm. Because girls at the lake are going through a lot. Yeah, there's yeah. so many issues there. That's but also when you look at it, uh, that specific venture, it, uh, it's like it's gender balanced, yeah? yeah. But the, the people that m do a lot of marketing are the, the women yeah. or the ladies, yeah? yeah. So it means there's, there's a lot of challenges that they face. But then when it comes to now the fish itself, does it mean that you guys focus on specific location where, uh, especially in the lake region, where it's booming and uh, these mamas uh, that are there doing this transaction, maybe they are working in cohorts with fishermen who are delivering delivering the fish, or you're also even uh, teaching them how to go fish, the fish from the lake. Yes, uh, the fishing part is uh -huh. there. We want the, them to do uh, good fish practicing, like they uh -huh. do the good fish practicing. And like you've said, it's the gender balance. Mm -hmm. So with that, they will have to do with the farmers. Like mm -hmm. the recent thing you saw about our fish cage, you know, yeah. that is because maybe lack of knowledge. And then uh, lake is just like a land. You mm -hmm. never know when it will rain and then, you know, a lot is happening. Like they said, what happened to that was due to lack of oxygen. That is a mm -hmm. climate thing. You can't control. You right. can't control it. Mm -hmm. So when they are bringing, uh, like I've said, we help them market them. And the other thing mm -hmm. we also do is that now we link them up with mm -hmm. people here in Nairobi. Right. You see, now that is where digital literacy come in. Now mm -hmm. they know yeah. that we will reach certain people mm -hmm. in the city. Like now right. we have the city market, we have the Gikomba, mm -hmm. now we have suppliers. That, like in business, like they say, everyone is a supplier. Mm -hmm. Like even if you wanted to be a supplier right now, you'll just be a supplier, I'll be a supplier. Everyone in here, we can be a supplier. Yeah. Yeah. So you act as an intermediary yeah. between uh, the fish farmers and now yeah. also the market. Yeah, the market here in Nairobi at Gikomba. Mm -hmm. We have so many stalls right. at City Market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that includes uh, machinery that's yeah. used to uh, do preservation because uh, mm -hmm. fish, I can imagine the journey from the lake to uh, the, the, the fish farmers itself, or the mm -hmm. fish sellers, or the fish mongers, and then to packaging. Does, uh, that, uh, does that mean that you have established maybe a storage a facility a structure that's mm -hmm. favoring even transportation and distrib distribution that includes uh, preservation of fish? Yeah, uh -huh. fish live by the lake. The mm -hmm. only way to preserve fish is by putting it mm -hmm. in something that is, you know, can freeze that okay. is water already. You can't put it on a dry place. Mm -hmm. So we have ice, we have coolers, we have freezers right. where they preserve. Now when the fishermen bring them, they are preserved and then mm -hmm. they're still transported with ice and those freezers and they're distributed to Mm -hmm. Yeah, to different places. So uh, as, as, as half fish, uh, yeah. maybe have you personally done that? Like yeah, you've yeah, already have. disseminated machines? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Freezer at the, at the lake and we also have some here in Nairobi. Right. At Gikomba. Uh -huh. But then there's alternatives as well. But before we get to alternatives, I want us to delve into how that business uh, of fish uh, farming is transforming uh, the livelihoods of women in your lake region if you were to point out our success stories of how this has transformed and changed their lives maybe what were 
let's say most outstanding ones that you'd like uh, our audience to understand and it should passionately push them to pay attention to that part of that practice? Oh, the, the main aim of every business is to make a profit. Okay. So you see, like I've said, along the lake, mm -hmm. we have young girls. If you do a research, uh, you will find these young girls, maybe they're losing hope. Maybe they just start a business and maybe you find they're getting mm -hmm. money, quick money. So you see, this business is helping them. Like you made maybe this mistake. You right. know the the problem which they're going through. You, mm -hmm. you didn't maybe they didn't get that uh, privilege to get education. Okay. That does not mean like it ends there. So when mm -hmm. they get this fish and now we bring in the um, you know the skills, right. it is helping them a lot. Now they mm -hmm. believe that it's not just selling and maybe your life ends by the lake. Mm -hmm. You can reach a larger a larger group or a larger market. So there are success stories. Fish itself if, uh, is just a booming business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you say it's close to, can we, do you see it maybe um, us reaching to a point where we're even able to export fish to the external market? Because uh, what you pointed out is literally just the local base right here. Mm -hmm. And of course, I believe Kenyans are, are great consumers of fish, yeah? Yeah, yeah, meaning yeah. that we have our own market here. But mm -hmm. uh, is it possible we also look at the international market so that we expand mm -hmm. that market base? Yeah. The good thing, uh, the fish, you have two types of fish. You have the Nile patch and then mm -hmm. the tilapia. So you see, personally, the fish that our, our girls and our women supply are the mm -hmm. fresh fish from the Lake Victoria. Right. Like you're, sh you're sure about them. That's basically tilapia. Yeah, okay. uh, Nile patch. A Nile patch. Nile patch, you know, is the only mm -hmm. fish that can survive on freshwater lake and Lake Victoria. Right. That is okay. among the freshwater lakes. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, with us, the benefit we have for us as a group is that mm -hmm. we are sure. Uh, many people, like you said, Kenyans are large consumers of fish, but they have trust issues, mm -hmm. you see. So with her fish impact, we are, we, are, we are sure of the qualities that the women are supplying mm -hmm. from the lake. Right yeah. now, you'll tell someone, maybe you're, you're selling fish, they'll ask right. you, Nisa makigani yo, ama nile, you know. Sewage. Yeah. Uh, so mm. with, uh, with the, our fish from her fish impact, right. they are very, you know, very fresh and we mm. are sure about that. No, so that is the benefit part that right. we are enjoying. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you look at it again, uh, I believe there are so many factors that favor even mm. growth of this uh, uh, a product that is fish. So it means that the lake, you have to put out uh, conducive uh, structures that also favor the farming itself. Because it, it, it doesn't just mean that you're widely just, for example, you wake up and say, today we're going to fish on the other side of the lake. It means that you've cultivated that area and you know that if we start on a journey to go fishing, we're going to come back maybe with this number of you know, fish. So does that mean that you've put up structures at the lake region where farmers, so fish farmers are practicing and nurturing and even rearing different types of fish that they're now able to supply to the market? Oh yeah. Uh, to correct you, a fisherman does not go to the lake and maybe know they'll come with this quantity. Okay. Even when you're doing the fish farming, you're not uh -huh. sure, the fingerlings, you're not sure right. how they will perform. Like okay. it's something that is affected by climate so it's unpredictable you can't really know yeah like a fisherman uh -huh. is just a risk taker uh -huh. what about the ones that are developed in a fish pond and you're able to yeah see the ones the that are fed yeah uh -huh. but at least they're still getting the oxygen from the lake right yeah so, so it's totally different from the lake the lake practice yeah yeah okay mm. uh -huh. uh, now we talk about it i think caging i think mm. that's another type of it where uh, fish farmers are able to secure a specific region and start rearing fish. Yeah. Uh, talk about how it's impacted production of fish. Yeah, you see with that, you're very sure that after a certain period, these uh, women or the women at the lake, they'll get a certain supply of mm -hmm. fish. So they're like, after three months, that is when the business will be booming. And that is when now they can uh, start advertising their business. Like you're just like, it's like farming. Mm -hmm. You prepare, you prepare your land when you know yeah. maybe it is going to rain or, you know, Right. So as women at the lake, that they now try to, they start to, you know, market. They're like, in three months, this is what is going to happen with mm -hmm. the skills we've empowered them with. Right. So they're sure. In three months, now they market. Three months, someone saw uh, maybe a post somewhere. She's like, okay. Mm -hmm. They said in three months, they, they will come. But like mm -hmm. I've said also, it's affected by climate. So like yeah. the, other, the other scandal, 
the fishermen and the women around the lake, they knew that after maybe two months, we will do this. And then yeah. the climate happened and it affected the fish. So, a huge number see, of fish yeah, died. it's a loss to you know? uh -huh. both the women and the fishermen. Yeah, but that includes now, uh, when it comes to now bad practice, I want you to talk about how uh, bad practice and lack of sensitization is killing that uh, venture. Because uh, you, you can't also expect to be doing things like water pollution which is, I believe, has greatly even impacted like Victoria. There's a place, I think, is it the seaweed? Mm -hmm. There's a place where there, there was a huge uh, outburst of uh, seaweed that just oh. grew and it affected a section of it and fish died. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a thing on news coverage that was done a couple of months ago where there's a section of it where fish just died, like huge number of it, millions in fact, mm -hmm. they died. I want you to talk about how bad practice has largely impacted production of fish, especially in the lake region. Yeah, but uh, but they have policies mm -hmm. right now. The people have come with policies, and then the authorities allow, uh, around the lake. Mm -hmm. So we have certain uh, that are in beaches. Right. So like I've said, you see uh, the the women we collect, uh, we pick them from every beach. Mm -hmm. So there are different beaches that have different authorities. Yeah. Yes, there are so many bad practices maybe that affect the fishing at the lake. Mm -hmm. But now these ones are regulated by the policies yeah are there any that you pointed out that you if you anyone who's watching right now they should seize from practicing or practicing like maybe a beach mm -hmm. where fish maybe they're supplying fish uh -huh. people should avoid maybe doing there the washings because you know these washings they have chemicals so when they pour them mm -hmm. around the lake and maybe people who are doing the fish farming they don't go deep seas it's right. just around there so the when lectures, people yeah. are practicing you know they put in chemicals so that is what is also restricted and avoided, especially where I come from. Mm, even industrialization yeah. and now yeah, yeah. dumping and pouring yeah. of garbage carelessly. Yeah. Actually, I think there was a time we were in Diani, no, in Diani or JKI, yeah? uh, there's, there's a part of the beach where it, it's cleaned, like people go there to clean and fish out plastic from the ocean. So I can only imagine at uh, the lake region. Maybe is there any structure like that where uh, you've employed people, especially in your group, that are specifically mm. concerned with, let's clean this section so that we give conducive environment for development of yes, fish. Yes, we have. We uh -huh. have. That one we partner now with the people in the community. You see, some things you can't do just alone. Okay. You have to involve the community. Like, it's just a simple thing. Let's clean. It's just mm. like a social, a civil service. Like, you're just doing it with the people in the community. Right. And maybe people in our group, after their co-hosts, mm -hmm. you know, we take them and then they clean. Because that is where the business is coming from that is helping them. So, it's just a, a digi uh, a simple thing, I just uh, you tell them this is what you're supposed to do and this is the right thing to do. Yeah. So sometimes we offer those ones, so like we just go and clean up those sleepers mm -hmm. yeah, with our group after mm -hmm. they are done with their training. training. Okay. I want you to talk about now climate change or climate crisis, which is like the biggest deal. I think this week could be on Thursday, it's tree planting. They mm -hmm. literally geared towards combating uh, climate change cri crisis, which is something that we can't avoid or we mm -hmm. can't run away from. That mm -hmm. will include having conversations that sensitize local netizens on the importance of practicing uh, keeping a clean environment. Mm -hmm. And water bodies are literally the core ingredient apart from greening uh, mm -hmm. We also have to keep our water bodies clean. So how has climate crisis affected also the number of fish uh, in terms of volumes of production, um, mm -hmm. also rearing? Because I believe there's specific seasons where these fish are. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys, do you even also have a structure of how they can mat and reproduce? Because, yeah, that, mm -hmm. that, that literally that happens. Yeah, they interact. Mm -hmm. And then you now have a number of fingerlings that are able to mm -hmm. thrive and become mature. I was reading a, a story. And in fact, what was this lady was saying, it's possible for even larger fish or bigger fish to be eating these smaller, you know, uh, fingerlings. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very keen so that you separate them, especially if you're doing the caging type of it. Okay. Uh -huh. So they're different. The, this uh -huh. natural fishing. The mm -hmm. natural fishing way I've said is the fishermen, they're not sure. You just wake up with your boat and, you know, you go looking oh, for okay. fish. And uh, that one you can't control. Mm -hmm. You'll just go and then they know where the fish is. You know, uh, if you are doing something, you're mm -hmm. smart like you're a journalist. You've studied mm -hmm. this, okay. you know, uh, what to do, what to do, you, you mm -hmm. understand. Okay. So like you said, the climate, it's affecting. Let's say mm -hmm. when it, there are heavy rains. Mm -hmm. The water will be, like there will be too many water and Lake Victoria is actually near the river Zoya. That is when, why sometimes we have floods. Mm -hmm. 
So when, the wa when there is large volume of water, you know, it's also a problem for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes to uh, around the lake, when yeah. there's these heavy rains, now the, the wastes are carried mm -hmm. to the lake. Okay. Like that is something that is being affected by the climate. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes there's something called karo. It's, it's in mother tongue. Yeah, sure, sure. So please say it. Say it's it. Karo, like karo, mm -hmm. it's something described as there's no enough oxygen. Right. Actually, that is why the, the fish cage, the fish sometimes they all die. die. Uh -huh. Because there's no enough supply of oxygen under mm -hmm. the water. Yeah. So the other, uh, the other fish that are not being farmed, mm -hmm. they run away. Right. So you see, it's difficult for farmers to go and maybe look for them. Now mm -hmm. that is when now the business is not working very well. Yes. And that is something that is affected by Climate, climate because yeah. you can't mm -hmm. control it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what do you educate uh, fish fish farmers on that when it comes to them taking precaution or taking caution for that part? We've not ventured uh, right now on fish farmers. Uh -huh. We are just on the women around the lake. But uh -huh. that is now our vision as a mm -hmm. program, yeah. like to find people, mm -hmm. experts who will come and maybe educate the fishermen on what to do when maybe mm -hmm. the fish run away and you know it's yeah. something that is just because of climate and they can't control. Mm. So yeah. it's still a missing gap in your yeah, program. Yeah, it's still a missing gap, but you're mm -hmm. working on it. All right. Mm -hmm. So w which are, what is the peak season, let's say, like when the volumes of fish are way up there and the, the season where they're way low? Uh, when there are no so much rain. And then mm -hmm. you can't predict, like, okay. uh, you know, fish are like, should I say just the animals, like, you know, they're mm -hmm. just like animals. They go right. looking for their own food. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's just, you know, a game and the seasons when the lake is favorable, when it's not favorable, like mm -hmm. it's something sometimes fishermen can't control. Yeah. Like yeah. during warmer seasons, uh, how is the production? During warmer season, yeah, the production is a bit nice mm -hmm. and when there's so much rain like i've said now the the water volume is very large and okay. then the fishermen can't go very very deep to find the fish right as compared to uh rainy or floody yeah, you know yeah. seasons mm -hmm. yeah but then um alternatives now i want us to look at uh, the alternatives because um, i've seen i've seen people that have also still at the lake region they decided to come up with their own uh fish pond uh, they put mm -hmm. up that structure and they're pr really producing uh uh, huge, huge amounts of, uh, of, of this product. And then they're also given competition to those that are practicing it organically at mm -hmm. um, the lake region. So mm -hmm. when it comes to some of these types of practices, how do you empower and educate these uh, women that you're working with to maybe mm -hmm. also ensure that they have a third at least? Sila uh, Zimatuku at the lake. Am mm -hmm. you know, mainly solely centered on them being at the lake? or you're also equipping them to when have alternatives? When it comes to digital literacy, we provide uh -huh. for even those who are doing the farming. It's the not ponds, only, yeah. yeah, even the ponds. It's okay. not, uh, not only those that are sourcing them from the lake. From the lake. Okay. Even those that are doing the pond, they need to mm -hmm. sell their fish. Right. And you know, the world is digital, so how will they reach a larger? So mm -hmm. we don't discriminate. That is not right. something that we discriminate. It's just mm -hmm. that we are considering the lake region mm -hmm. because we are from the lake region. Right. Yeah. And uh, just reading from your description, you've helped up to 500 women yeah. before I just get into it. Maybe mm -hmm. you can point out how do, well, what, what is the kind of help that they've received? Uh, in, your, in your detail, you said you've mm -hmm. empowered over 500 women since 2019 mm -hmm. and also ensured they've had business strategy and innovation, meaning that you've tapped into technology like yeah. you've constantly mm -hmm. uh, pointed out. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that include maybe coming up with an app or making them to have things like smartphones, uh, getting to interact on the digital platforms and say, you know what, I am so and so and I have this profile here, I sell tilapia here, I mm. sell nalpach. Is there something like that in place? As yeah. <laughs> you know now with computer they they just come to the to the cyber maybe a place a cohort that we've created okay. they come in now with smartphone we organize how they can get smartphone we provide for a few mm -hmm. the smartphones about the app we've not yet come up with an app but it's something we are talking about mm -hmm. so that after empowering them we can now have one of our apps so when people want fresh lake maybe from the lake victoria from the lake region they can find from that app yeah 
Yeah. All right. But then also the gender part really matters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned uh, your mom uh, did the business. Mm -hmm. But then when it, when it comes to spreading this practice in urban areas, uh, mm -hmm. do you believe it's possible so that also it's not just like it's women from the Lakeside region? Mm -hmm. Then let's also spread awareness now that it's tapping in the digital space. Mm -hmm. Let's even have women in Karen, you know, mm -hmm. women in Kibra, yeah, yeah. women in Korogocho tap into this space. Because mm -hmm. I also believe those that are not just the market consumers, they can also be part of the business and consume yeah. you know the product yeah you know if you want to correct something you uh -huh. start it from the the main source right so before that the women around the lake didn't have this digital literacy mm -hmm. but now when we provide them with that digital literacy it will leverage mm -hmm. like for them to deal maybe with a woman in Karen with a woman in Nairobi you know mm -hmm. because that is something that was happening even before I was born yeah. Like they were bringing fish, they were supplying fish here to Nairobi, to okay. Eldoret, to Kericho. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was affecting them because they didn't know that digital literacy. Mm -hmm. And now you're dealing with someone who has, uh, you know, digital literacy. So uh -huh. it's very hard. So we came in to, you know, close that gap to uh -huh. empower these women for them also to have digital literacy, to mm -hmm. help them deal with now their other suppliers. Right. Yeah. There's an article here uh, where somebody pointed out uh, they want the government to empower local fishermen in the Lake Victoria region yeah. to allow them to venture into fish caging technology, mm -hmm. meaning that it's a type of fish practice that's yeah. happening there. Yeah. I want you to talk about maybe if there's fish farmers in your program that have already embraced this type of fish farming mm -hmm. and how far is it? Are you yet there? Yeah, we are. We, we just started like they need to read the policies you mm -hmm. know when you start a cage it's not just you know putting a cage and then maybe you put those nets and then maybe you put your fish okay. you have to learn the do's the don'ts mm -hmm. what those fish are f will feed on you know sometimes you start and maybe you fail because lack of knowledge maybe mm -hmm. you don't know what to feed the fish at what time right so we are also empowering them with that like you teach them on mm -hmm. what to feed fish at what time and you know mm -hmm. You also have to measure, like you don't just go at the lake. There are right. some policies, you don't just go at the lake and decide, you know, mm -hmm. I want to make a, a, a fish pond or a fish mm -hmm. pond here. And so maybe what are the limiting policies? Maybe limiting, because this, this means regulation. Yeah, regulation. That's literally regulation. So mm -hmm. what are the pros, pros and cons in these uh, policies? Yeah, the first, the first and the main one, you have also to consider people who live along the lake. Okay. Because there are, there are families that live along the lake, but you bringing maybe that time of feeding your fish. You know, you're feeding them with another food, maybe which is not conducive to the water when it reaches, and that is where people get their water for drinking, mm -hmm. maybe bathing, washing their utensils. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we have to consider, right. the people who are using, uh, who are getting water along that place mm -hmm. yeah right uh there's also because uh, the lake victoria region is also shared in uganda yeah. but uh, here they pointed out there's a reduction of a number of reasons including restrictions imposed by the ugandan government on fishermen in the lake victoria region giving way to fish caging technology so this means it's also spreading to okay. our neighboring country yeah, yeah. uh how have you come in contact with this and helped it with the w when it comes to the uganda part we've not mm -hmm. handled that part per se okay. as for now here yeah. Right, so it's basically solely at the, uh, yeah, Lake, the Lake region. region. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when it comes to government uh, chipping in and helping this venture, have you guys done maybe a reach out? Have you guys launched a proposal? Or maybe have you already even received? Because this again draws back to grants, yeah. uh, funding, and that includes, it's actually the main part of empowerment, yeah, yeah. funding so that you specifically go and venture into this business. Are you even doing it individually as a program? Yeah, yeah, we are. Now the funding, like I've said, the digital part, we get the funding maybe like the Frankies, they provide us with the computers, the gadgets, mm -hmm. yeah, right. we get help. And then uh, sometimes when we are providing that education, we have a fee, which mm -hmm. I had not mentioned, it's right. a 3,000 thing. So after that, we can get on how we sustain ourselves as a program. Yeah. yeah, so if any fish farmer would love to venture into that business and get to practice it, how can they enroll in your program? And maybe what are the benefits? Uh, lucratively if they were to the benefits yes of being in your program half fish impact yeah yeah the benefits of being in our program like uh -huh. i've said after we train them we don't just train them and leave them there with For the how knowledge. long do you train uh three months mm -hmm. we don't just train them and maybe leave them at that level we okay. train them and now we start connecting them to 
people like around we teach them how to market how to do the digital marketing like mm -hmm. that yeah and we also look for them the suppliers like me now sometimes i'm also in nairobi i'm at home so mm -hmm. here in nairobi i look for them suppliers at gikomba oh so you yeah. you go there single-handedly to select yeah so it means you interact there's a lot yeah. of interaction between yeah, you between you yeah. and the here in nairobi maybe in your interactions what are the, some of the most common conversations you hear from these mamas because they mm. talk here yeah, and they yeah. talk good conversations of course yeah it's business <laughs> yeah Shara, the main yeah. reason we wanted to give them the digital literacy uh -huh. the mamas even you go if you go to ask them uh -huh. they don't trust people in nairobi they're like oh yeah. what to in nairobi you know alinga, so, alinga. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we are, we are also trying to create that trust. Mm -hmm. You know, a person will deal with you according to what you know. Right. And I understand maybe before, uh -huh. you know, you can't deal we, when you deal with a very smart person. You know, it's so easy for them to manipulate you. Mm -hmm. So we are just trying to leverage these women to right. know what is happening in the city and how they can take more benefits of what mm -hmm. they have. Uh -huh. So at least when you know they market their products and then they come intact, they can bargain right. with those people. They can say, this is my price. You know, mm -hmm. earlier, too, you're bringing fish in Nairobi, and then mm -hmm. someone in Nairobi is telling you, okay, yeah. it's 120. But people like us, now we come in to tell them, this is the price in the market. Oh, so you also set the prices. Uh, not that, that we set. Okay. I say this is the price in the right. market. Okay. So, so we you also help rates. them with the information. Yeah. All right. okay. We also help them with the information mm -hmm. that where you are taking the fish, mm -hmm. this is the price. And mm -hmm. like before, like they didn't know. Right. So that is the problem, the stories I get. So mm -hmm. at least with that, we are trying to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And now that uh, they're becoming more aware of what is going on yes. through, you know, through the phone. Yeah. yeah. And that is just feeding them with information. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want you to talk about market stability as we near towards the close of this conversation. Um, mm -hmm. Are there competitors in that space and who are the competitors? It has reminded me those at time, uh, those, those talk that there's fish from China. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There's even a time we did experiment. We consumed a different type of fish, and then one from the lake region. Somebody said, ah, this one tastes spongy, like I couldn't left lever. Yeah, mm -hmm. the original you know, mm -hmm. fish. And somebody can tell, anyway, the inner test is totally different from this one. Uh, how does infiltration come in, and who are the infiltrators of the market when it comes to now the fish market stability and it's staying afloat? Oh, the difference is just like the... Um some uh, cook, uh, chicken, a mm -hmm. chicken with, you a know, broiler a broiler. The there is a yeah. difference, okay. same as fish. Okay. You know, the fish from the lake, the original mm -hmm. fish from the lake, they look for their own food. Mm -hmm. Like I call them hustlers. Like okay. they go and find their food and feed for themselves. Mm -hmm. But you know, the other ones, the China ones, they are fed. Okay. So you can't tell me the taste will be the same. Mm -hmm. That is the big or the bigger challenge you're also getting. So when you go to the market, especially the tilapia part, right? Uh, for like I've said, for Nile patch, it's so rare. Mm -hmm. There is no that stiff competition because uh, Nile patch only survives in freshwater lakes. Right. So with that, when you're buying a Nile patch, you are sure that mm -hmm. this is from a fresh water, water lake. lake. Okay. And around here is like Lake Victoria because mm -hmm. it comes from Uganda, Busia, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. We have mm -hmm. Lake Victoria. Mm -hmm. So another competition is some people from Tanzania actually export them to Kenya. Right. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. the Nile patch because, you know, we have uh, Lake Victoria in all of them. Mm -hmm. That is also a competition. Right. And then another competition is not per se a competition, but I think it's interrelation mm -hmm. between the countries. It's okay. still the same thing because as Kenyans, we also want to s uh, to transport our fish. So yeah. but we that have means also to accept enough. something. It to also give. means you're not producing enough as a country if no. you have to go to <laughs> another country to bring the same product, which is organically reared here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, and then the tilapia part, like we've said, the China part, so the farming. You know, mm -hmm. farming, like I've said, after a cer uh, certain period, mm -hmm. we have large amounts. Now they have matured. Okay. And maybe sometimes it collides with the lake. Now mm -hmm. when the, there's, so, there's so much fish at the lake, okay. like the fishermen are getting it. Mm -hmm. And now that is the same time the, right. the fish farm, like the, maybe of China, they've also matured. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're going to the same place. They're going to the market. So when they mm -hmm. come to the market, that is a very, very stiff competition. Yeah. But now there's something that separates us from them. It's uh -huh. because these ones are fresh. So right. you find people You're asking first. 
Yeah. Mm. There's even somebody who said, hey, you know, you know, mm. <laughs> you're like, yeah, it's on the plate, but it doesn't like, like, there's just a feeling of it. In fact, when it comes to even the soup and the testing, yeah. but also what I'm trying to understand is how was it possible that we had fish from China infiltrating the Kenyan market and mm. giving our very own business right here competition? Mm. What happened, you know, from your observation? From my observation, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm like, for countries we are different countries and then mm -hmm. we act, interact uh -huh. like you've said like m what if we start maybe exporting our fish it right. does not mean maybe those places they don't have fish maybe mm -hmm. like china they have yeah. their lakes they mm -hmm. have their fish but maybe we are going to offer something it's just like you know it's just an interaction like if the tanzanians are bringing to kenya mm -hmm. it's not because kenya we have low supply yeah. it's just that they are bringing to maintain that thing you have to give mm -hmm. to get Right. So, you know, if we have to transport, we have yeah. also to accept maybe right. some of the things to enter. So it will depend if we create a strong marketing base of our own. Mm -hmm. So someone may be like, maybe at the market I've experienced this, someone will uh -huh. ask you, is this Victoria or? Yeah. China. Yeah, yeah. China. Uh, as we close, uh, maybe talk about uh, the, nu the nutritious value of this specific uh, commodity. Oh, okay. uh, which one is the most nutritious? And also maybe other edible and unedible fish, uh, maybe. Because uh, we have people, yeah. there's somebody who is sitting in Kilelesho and they have a big aquarium at the entrance mm. and there's goldfish yeah. just swimming in. And some of them really look colorful. They are like, this looks like beauty kind of. Yeah. But then you're like, this is fish. You'd see a cat just, yeah. you know, hovering around. Maybe you can talk about that as well. Are there non-edibles and edibles and also talk about nutritious value to the consumers? Oh, uh, nutritious value, if mm -hmm. I'm to talk about it, like we know, uh, fish, we get uh, omega-3, comes mm -hmm. from the fish, like right. especially those from the freshwater lakes. That is mm -hmm. why you see people from Budalangi or around the lake are very mm. intelligent and very smart. Mm. That is because they're getting okay. omega-3, mm -hmm. like, first hand. Okay. Like it has not been processed, it has not been done any... Uh, uh, um, it has not been added any flavor or anything. They're just mm -hmm. getting it. So fish is nutritious, nutritious because of the omega-3. Right. And as we know, omega-3 helps in brain development. Yeah. So those mm -hmm. people at the lake, their brains start developing at a mm -hmm. very early age. Because mm -hmm. if you just eat fish, yeah. you start developing, your brain start to develop at a very early age. Okay. And the point you've mentioned about non-eatable and... Uh, non-edible and edible. Uh, non -edible, uh -huh. edible and edible. edible. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure, but... Mm -hmm. um, How do these, uh, the ones in aquarium, come to be? Are they like specifically, you know, are there conditions, maybe contrived, meaning created conditions, where a type of fish is meant to met with another and then it breeds and brings out maybe a goldfish. Uh, mm -hmm. Another one is green in color. There's even another one that had like seven colors, yeah? yeah, yeah. There's even another one that looked like a cat. Mm -hmm. I understand there's catfish, though, yeah. 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 But I'm told it's very nutritious as well. Yeah. The one that has, looks like uh, this yeah. nini of a cockroach, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's nutritious, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Uh -huh. So, uh, like I've said, there are different fish which uh, survive in different lakes. Mm -hmm. Like okay. if you look maybe videos of China, maybe if you go to YouTube and maybe you look for fish, Right. You'll just see a different type of fish that you've never even seen, mm. which me that means uh, it is there. Okay. It is eatable, but not maybe in our country, Kenya, or in mm. our waters. Right. Maybe it's surviving in water in China. Maybe mm. it can only survive, like if you eat the fish from Mombasa, right. there's a certain, a certain way they taste like. Uh -huh. So if you take someone who has been eating fish from Lake Victoria, he'll think right. like, no, this is not the right Something fish, and maybe off, they'll yeah. say, I'm not supposed to eat this. Right. Yeah, but as okay. long as it's a fish and it's in the lake, I think it's edible. It just uh, depends with mm -hmm. where. Right. If it's a fish that is surviving in freshwater lake, salty, maybe water in China, you know. Mm. Yeah. Are there cartels <laughs> in that <laughs> venture? <laughs> every, uh, uh, there's somebody I interviewed here who told me there's cartels in every venture. Mm -hmm. And there's scandalous activities that just happens. You hear, oh, fish died, or somebody even came and poisoned. Like, there's an incident that was reported still in the Lake region. Somebody mm -hmm. poisoned a cage farm, and yeah. fish died to just sabotage that farmer. Yeah. So are there maybe scandalous activities that maybe also the government need to chip in as we close? And how, mm -hmm. maybe also your call to action, how can the government empower fish farmers and also promote fish marketing and then also your call to action to fish farmers and also how they can get to tap into your program and get to plug in and benefit. 
Yeah. First thing I would request the government in now is now to enter, to chip in and work with us to help those women have mm -hmm. digital literacy. Okay. Even if you are helping them maybe with finger, finger, fingerlings. Yeah. fingerlings. Okay. Yes, you're helping them with, and after they're grown, how are you expecting them to supply them to the market? Mm -hmm. So if they come to us, we empower those women with digital literacy, they right. provide for them resources, because that is also, those women are paying tax. Mm. So it's a business. So when right. they come, they provide the policies. The government itself has to have policies, and then they have to chip in to provide the gadgets, mm -hmm. you know, what those women can use, okay. provide fingerlings, you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, I want you to tell them how they can get to plug into your program and how mm -hmm. they'll benefit from it and how can they go about it. Do you have a website? Is there a number? Is there social mm -hmm. media? Yeah. yeah. Very fast. Right now we are working, we are using the Frankie's Foundation and when you go on our Facebook, it's called Her Fish Impact by Frankie's Foundation. We, ha we are on TikTok and my personal page is on Instagram, it's Ada, so on, on Facebook is Mary Ada. Right, so they'll get them, they'll get, is that maybe if they reach out, is that someone who's speaking to them and be like, hey, yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. Oh, yeah. so there's yeah, a number as well. Whether you want to join the program, whether uh -huh. you want the fish, you know, I can organize the women to okay. supply them. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Miss uh, Mary, Miss or Mrs. Miss. Right, thank you so much, Ms. Mary Nekesa. Mm -hmm. She's the founder of Halfish Impact for sharing your insights with us on this uh, topic. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right, thank you too as well. I think this is where we take a very short break. When we come back, we'll be talking about matters road safety. We're just coming from a backdrop of accidents after accidents. In matters combating uh, road carnage, what are the safety procedures that we need to employ and put in place to ensure that we totally alleviate this menace? That's the next conversation that we'll be having at 1254 channel at Brands Corner 1. We take a break. We come back in just a bit. Stick around. <laughs>